Welcome to Road Trip Roundup. This episode is Stories of Nuclear Revenge. Please like and subscribe so we can continue to bring more videos every day. Without further ado, our first story is written by Seneca, entitled, Karma Generates Interest Over Time. In the third grade, I was an awkward kid, had a mean drunk father, struggled to fit in and make friends, and was bullied and shunned by other kids. One of my classmates, let's call him Derek, who regularly partook in bullying me showed me kindness one day. Being deprived of kindness or attention so regularly I was putty in his hands. He hung out with me during recess when I was usually alone, we laughed and talked about girls we like and he even apologized for being an asshole to me. The reason he was nice to me was because I had brought a very popular, expensive Batman action figure to school with me to pass the time since I was alone mostly. I saved allowance and mowed lawns for two months to buy that toy. Everyone wanted one. By the end of the day, he asked me if he could borrow the action figure and like the naive, socially inept kit I was I trusted him with it. The deal was to return it the following morning. I went home so happy, completely fooled, I never suspected a thing. The following day he completely ignored me, when I tried to talk to him he acted like I was crazy. When I asked him to return the action figure he simply said, you never gave me any Batman, maybe you imagine it and when I persisted he threatened to beat my ass. When I complained to my teacher I was told that it was my own fault for bringing toys to school, I was afraid they would involve my father so I dropped it. I couldn't let my father know or I would be called a pussy and have my ass beat and punished for the next two weeks. What's worse is Derek told all the girls that I confided to him about fancying that I lusted after them and that I wanked to them. I was a social outcast before that but at least I was tolerated but after his smear campaign with the girls, I was a leper, people wouldn't even look me in the eyes, not even the teachers. Kids started throwing stones at me and sabotaged and vandalized my property, it was hell. I did nothing about it but cry, I was just a weak-willed kid after all but to this day I wish I'd bit someone's ear off or something, anything in retaliation. After a while the bullying died down, I focused on my studies and started getting good grades. Derek started talking to me again but I ignored him completely. Sometimes he would repeat, why are you being such a baby, you didn't give me anything, you imagine it. By the end of the year, we moved houses and I transferred to another school not far away. Things were much better there, I finally had friends and I was not as naive anymore so I was not as easily targeted. But I was still mostly me and still got picked on now and then. Over the years I became somewhat of a delinquent and in high school, I got into regular fights, I may have been overcompensating for the lack of a spine I had in my younger years. I bartended in nightclubs, hotels, and cruise liners in my early 20s, this helped me a lot to be more socially adept and to understand social dynamics and human nature. I finished trade school and qualified as an electrician and later as a plumber, I know, water and electricity, but believe it or not, I thought it was ingenious at the time. I started my own business, developed a reputation for excellent workmanship in my local area, and did well for myself. When I was 29, I'm 36 now. I received a call out at 2 in the morning for a flooding emergency at a local residence. When I got there the place was a mess, water was jetting out of a burst pipe and electrical equipment was shorted, it was highly dangerous. The living room floor was caved in due to a sinkhole. I was met by the wife, let's call her Jane, hysterical and beside herself, she somehow thought that she was responsible which I found odd, I assured her that it couldn't possibly be her fault. He arrived not five minutes later. His demeanor was irate and he didn't greet or shake my hand when I offered, I recognized him immediately, Derek from all those years ago. He demanded to know why I have not begun fixing the issue yet, I was professional and told him what I told the wife in terms of costs but I hid the written quote in my vehicle. I told him who I was and acted happy to see him, assuring him that he was in good hands. After a while of arguing with his wife he seemed to calm down and joked around with me, I knew I had fooled him. We talked about our careers, kids. In our school days, I gave him tips and fake recommendations, we got along great and his trust was easy to gain. He must have thought of me as a complete sucker. I assured him that he was in good hands and this would be fixed in no time. I was careful not to start any actual work on the property, doing the smallest thing would make me responsible for all of it. Derek left after an hour or so and his wife stayed behind. I started my revenge. When I was doing my assessment I noticed that most of the building did not comply with city regulations and did not adhere to the registered and approved plans. 
there were multiple safety hazards and all plumbing and electrical work were completed by unqualified and uncertified people in an attempt to save money. Also, the pipe in question had been leaking for a few weeks at least, getting worse by the day and finally causing a disaster, which means their water bill would be astronomical at the end of the month unless a qualified plumber endorses a rebate with the municipality. I called my contact at the city, let's call him Donovan, and notified him of all the regulatory violations, safety hazards, and non-city compliant installations on the property. I also told him of the possible water bill. He promised to be there the next day. I immediately started photographing and documenting. The following morning my contact was there at 10, he had a field day. He informed Derek's wife of the calamity that was to come. They would be forced to tear down all the building additions, remove all the uncertified plumbing and wiring installations, have the plans reapproved, and start from scratch, which is an estimated loss of approximately 950000 Derek was there in minutes, he was livid. He quickly threatened legal action but Donovan simply told him that he had more than enough photographic evidence to have the property declared invalid within a week if Derek did not comply in writing. Donovan reminded Derek that he does this for a living and that the city has more legal resources to waste money on. I left Derek an invoice for my time just to smear salt in the wound and took my leave. Later he called me and called me every name under the sun, I remained silent and he hung up. He went on a Facebook rant about me, which was a bad idea, all of the community stood up for me and it started a storytelling competition where all kinds of people revealed stories of unsavory things Derek did to them in the past. Apparently, Derek has always been an asshole, he never changed. One day he called me and asked to meet, he sounded defeated and depressed so I decided to meet and see what was up. I met him at a local busy convenience store. I know better than to take Derek the weasel at face value, so noticed quickly when he laid his phone screen down on the table, I knew he may be recording the conversation. He apologized for his behavior which surprised me and told me that this whole dilemma has all but bankrupted him. He told me he took out a loan for the building additions and cut corners to save money, that everyone does it. He showed me the water bill which was nearly 80000 a problem easily erased with a qualified plumber's signature and endorsement. I refused. He got irate again. Then he asked me, why did you do this to me? I know I was a dick to you at when we were kids but I don't deserve to have my and my wife's lives ruined because of mistakes I made when I was a kid. What kind of person are you? You told me I was in good hands. I trusted you, you assured me you would help me, then you stabbed me in the back. You quoted me only a few hundred and told me not to worry. I replied, I said no such thing. Derek, stop lying, you told me that it would cost a few hundred maybe less, I heard you say it, you promised to help me and gave me recommendations. Why are you doing this to me? Seneca, Derek, you must have imagined it. I looked him in the eye. He knew exactly why I said that, the same thing he told me almost twenty years ago. I repeated just to drive it home. Seneca, you're being a baby, I never quoted you for anything, you imagine it. He knew I was destroying him financially because of a Batman action figure he stole from me twenty years ago, I could see it in his eyes, but he couldn't bring himself to say it. His expression was a mixture of astonishment and disgust. I looked him dead in the eyes for a few seconds for effect then got up and left. I slept like a baby that night and had a goofy smile all week after. He tried calling a few times but sent him a text stating that further harassment will be met with legal action. Derek, you know what your real name is, and what mine is, if in the future you read this and realize how I screwed you over, remember how costly that little Batman action figure was to you after years of accumulated interest and karma. The look of despair on your face when you realize why you were ruined was delicious, I cackled maniacally on the drive home from that convenience store. It was time for you to pay the piper. And if you think this will help you legally go ahead and try, it won't, so don't waste your time. Or rather do, waste as much time and money, I welcome being even more of a financial inconvenience to your life. Fuck you, Derek. Edit, if the monetary amounts confuse you, I don't live in the USA. Divide the amounts by 8 and you have a rough estimate of the exchange rate. Our second story is written by, most aggrieved, and is called, all Army Service Records Lost Using phone so apologies for formatting errors TLDR, company commander was a super dick to my dad, so dad got back before leaving the service. This happened a few years back. 
my dad found out he's super allergic to some kind of shrub in Central Texas, for Hood, after he was transferred there. As a result, he was restricted to office work and prohibited by Army doctors from outdoor duties. His West Point grad commanding officer was a hyper-warrior kind of dude who detested soldiers who didn't want to train 24-7. Unfortunately, he thought my dad was milking his allergies in order to avoid being a real soldier. My dad was also married and my mom was pregnant with my older sister, a situation that infuriated the captain because hashtag reasons. The CO never, ever passed an opportunity to humiliate my dad by questioning his manhood, doubting his commitment to protecting the Constitution, disparaging his duties, etc. The CO would call him out in front of the company or debase him in front of higher HQ staff. He'd call a house at 6 a.m. on Sunday and order dad in for bullshit reasons, anything to piss him off. In short, he made his life a living hell. For what it's worth, the first sergeant loved my dad's work performance and said so privately. When my dad got orders to leave active duty, which enraged the CO, he found out that the CO received orders for an assignment that was a notch needed to guarantee promotions as well as other plum jobs. Dad decided to fuck with his official records before leaving. As company clerk, he had full access to unit personnel files, orders, etc., which meant he also had keys to the building as well. This was during the pre-digital, pre-computer era. The night before my dad was to get out, he took all of the captain's personnel folders and mailed them separately and anonymously to various posts around the globe knowing full well it would take weeks to deliver them to geographically unrelated unit mailrooms around the world that may or may not open the packages in order to return them. It just so happened that the unit was in the field for a two-week exercise on the day my dad left, which meant a skeleton crew would man the phones and mow lawns until they returned from the field. No one was the wiser for weeks. One of my dad's old poker-playing sergeant buds wrote a few months later telling him that the captain went ballistic, that the missing files seriously damaged the fuckface of a captain's career prospects since some of the files were lost in the system, therefore, the coveted assignment orders were cancelled and the entire personnel record had to be reconstructed manually by the Department of the Army. My dad said it was a teaching moment for the cruel asshole that you should never fuck with your unit clerk, because even chairborne rangers know how to seriously wound enemies, foreign and domestic. Our third story is written by Hihaba and is called I, 15 male, indirectly caused the death of my abusive ex-stepdad. I'm on mobile so I apologize if this is hard to read. And to any mod, if this isn't nuclear revenge enough then please tell me and I'll post somewhere else. I also would like to state there will be a bit of background information so if you don't want to read it skip to the karma. If you want a TLDR go to the bottom. Now on to the story. Backstory. When I was nine my mom met a man who for the sake of the story we'll call Jay. Jay was an unremarkable man, he was a chef and he was from New York living in South Philadelphia at the time. My mom being emotionally unstable decided to give him a try after lots of past relationships not working out, seriously she has a bad taste in men. And I feel it is a good time to mention my dad is dead from a drug overdose, Philadelphia man, drugs are everywhere. So my mom was desperate for someone to be that guy who is good for her and me. She gives Jay a chance and out of nowhere boom Jay has cancer. Came out of the blue when my mom's heartstrings were pulled by him and she was attached to him for good. I was nine at the time so of course I was a stupid kid who never thought my mom could be wrong. Well, I didn't notice her getting black eyes but my grandfather did. So one day at a corner store in my neighborhood he decided to beat Jay black and blue. He was stuck on the couch for days and looking back it brings a smile to my face but he convinced my mom that my grandmother, who was manipulative, manipulated my grandfather to beat him up so we have to move. After an intervention was held, holy fucking shit I was there it was wild, my mom decided to move. We packed our things in our van and I held my 90 pound Rottweiler on my lap and we moved to fucking Florida. Chapter 2 Fucking Florida I'm gonna admit, life kinda sucked here. For five years I was stuck in such a dumpster fire of a state with no family support. My mom was abused daily and I was mostly mentally abused. I also lost my great-grandmother at this time and I wanted to go back to Philly for the funeral but Jay said no. Eventually, in 2021 my mom left Jay. And then the worst night of my life happened. Chapter 3 Halloween 2021 I was still in Florida, shocker, and I went trick-or-treating with a younger friend. At this point in time, my mom was paying for Jay's new apartment because she just wanted him gone. Well, he broke into our apartment, 
took my puppy for a walk. Weird time to care about a dog while committing a crime, but hey my dog had fun, and smashed everything. My mom decided instead of calling the police she would confront him, with me, alone. So we went in as a precaution, my mom had a knife on her. We went and when we got there there was a girl with Jay. A fight ensued and I called 911. I also beat the everlasting shit out of Jay. Unfortunately my mom couldn't see that and thought Jay was winning. So she stabbed him, non-lethal as fat got it he didn't go to the hospital. So when police showed up they gave a good look at my mom with choke marks from the fight, and arrested her for assault and breaking and entering. Chapter 4 Leaving Florida and Having a Very Merry Christmas Well, the trial came and went, my mother is off the hook but she will be a felon until completion of a program. So we left him in Florida and decided to move back north to New Jersey. If my mom breaking up with Jay was account to me because I pushed hard for it. Life continues. But November comes around and I received news that made me burst out in laughter. Jay's sister came forward and told us he shot himself in the head. I even read his suicide note and everything. I ruined his relationship with my mom and karma came back. Life goes on, and he dies unloved and alone. TLDR, I drove my ex-stepdad to suicide after convincing my mom to leave him. Edit, thank you all for the supportive comments, I do want to clear up one thing. My mother has mental issues and she was diagnosed wrong. She was taking medicine that made her worse, not better. She's on track to get off her current medication and take new medication soon. Edit 2. I don't feel guilty about what happened. I actually feel angry that he's dead. I would rather have him live as a homeless bum with nothing in his life. Unfortunately, he took the easy way out which was the bullet, but still, he's dead so I get some comfort from that. Our fourth story is written by Oscar the Crouch and is called A Fitting Twist, Super Long, My B. Edit 1. Typos and readability, maybe better. Background I had a pretty terrible childhood. Don't get me wrong, I have heard of way worse, but it was far from healthy or normal. When I was young, my parents were millionaires, my father's parents owning several of the largest businesses in the region. They divorced before I was a teenager, and both of their lives plummeted downhill. By the time I was 16, I was living on my own. Drugs, Alcohol and addiction have long since killed them both. Neither of them ever worked a job since I was a teenager. Both of them died homeless before the age of 50. Situation I joined the military and left town without ever looking back. As more years passed, I added more and more distance, physically and mentally, from my parents. When I was 20, I learned that my mother had been arrested for stealing a large sum of money from my grandmother who was living on her own but in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. The state ended up pressing charges against my mother because my grandmother would not. The detective told me that they had to because my mom and her POS boyfriend were fueling the criminal underground where she lived. I was lost and shocked. I knew my mother had problems, but until this moment, I had always viewed her as a sort of forest hippie. This is the moment that is the catalyst for my nuclear revenge. You see, my grandmother was pretty wealthy. Terrified that she would be locked away in an old folks' home, she entertained the leeching of my mother and P.O.S. guy. The problem is that it was never enough. Even after my grandmother bought my mother a house down the street from her, she continued to rob her own mother blind. She also fed my underage sister a stream of drugs and brought her in on the con. It ultimately resulted in my mother and sister getting their first felony conviction. Grand theft and check fraud, which my mother tried to pin on her own daughter because she was just a minor. A few years later, I was newly married with my first child and freshly returned from my first deployment to Iraq. We just completed another move across the country, and I am starting a new job at a new unit. I get home from work and have a strange short voicemail from my uncle, who is like the okayest guy I have ever met. It literally just says, my mom is in the psych ward at the big hospital in her town. She left everything in your name. I'm flying back home. This is where I learned that the legal document my grandma had me sign when I was 16 made me the executor of her estate, power of attorney, etc. My unit arranges a very generous amount of time off to fly across the country and deal with this bizarre scenario. She lived alone in this massive house. My mom had destroyed the house my grandmother bought her, then moved into grandma's house on the auspices of caring for her. 
there were so many fleas inside that the contractors I hired to make repairs wouldn't go inside. Needles were everywhere, and for some reason, everything was an ashtray. It was an insane thing to witness slash experience. I still refused to interact with my mom at this point of my life, but now that I had the keys to the kingdom, aka access to the pot o' gold, she tried to worm back into my life with renewed vigor. I always just told her to fuck off. My grandmother, in the meantime, had been deemed unfit to live on her own. I was 23, with a new baby in marriage, if you remember, so I made the poor decision to put my grandmother into a nursing home. I fixed up the house, rented it to create passive income so she would not deplete her savings, and headed back home. Of course, Grandma is spicy and got kicked out of her swanky retirement home when she broke a coffee cup over some other lady's head for snooping around in her room. She was apparently wearing my grandmother's shoes when she got clocked. The same woman, a resident, had propositioned me in front of my wife when we were touring the facility. She was a different kind of the same spicy as grandma. Her only option after the incident was a psych ward. So my senile grandmother moved in with my family, and she lived with us for more than five years until her care was just out of our capability. This is about the time that I exacted my revenge. The nuclear option. When the state filed charges against my mother, way back when I was 20, part of her restitution included a lien that was placed against her property in the name of my grandmother for a little less than $100,000. Some years later, my mother had not paid her property taxes in so long that she was about to lose the house. She called me to explain that the lien would not be paid if the house was auctioned, which I knew was not true, but I saw an opportunity. I eventually worked out a deal with her. She would sign the deed over to me and I would then sell the house and pay for her to move somewhere else. I fly to town, meet her, and sign the deed over. She expected me to use my name and credit to get her a luxury apartment. She also wanted me to buy her a new truck, and let's not forget the moving company. I rented her a U-Haul truck and got her a storage unit that I had paid for six months. Then I put her in shithead up in an extended stay for a little while. I fixed up the property and sold it to the same rental group that bought my grandmother's house shortly before. I used the money to buy annuities that enable my grandmother to live in a normal house with a live-in nurse and care at a 1 to 4 ratio. Which is amazing for her. She still might run out of money because of what my mother did, and I honestly don't know what will happen then. She's got some years before I have to worry, and she's just shy of 100. My mother was on the street within six months. The last time I saw her, she looked like the crazy person who lives under a bridge, she did at one point. She was covered in sores, balding, and methed out. She'd received a social security disability back payment of what would have been a significant amount for her. She died in a hospital less than three days later. Partied herself to death. The POS dropped her off at the curb and never saw her again. I told the dude I would give him some money if he gave me the key to the storage unit. Somehow, years later, she had managed to keep it. I shared the loot with my siblings, gave POS a hundred bucks, and closed that chapter of my life permanently. Our fifth story is written by DFS Not Randy Marsh and is called Dude Pays Me in Counterfeit Currency, Immediately Gets Arrested. Shared this in the comments of another post and was recommended to share it here. Years ago, roughly 2010, when I was doing pizza delivery, I delivered on campus. Pretty standard procedure, call the customer and wait in the parking lot. Buddy comes down, hands me the money, takes the pizza and walks away. Then he starts to run. I look in my hand, and one of the $10 bills is ripped in half, and the $20 is horribly counterfeit. The dude is already back in his dorm, and it's pass activated, so I can't even get in. Then I remembered I have his number in my phone from when I called him. So I call the store, tell them what happened and they mark his number as a prank caller, so no more deliveries. Figured eh, that's good enough I guess. Then as I was leaving, I see campus security, talking to a police member. There was a check stop just before the entrance to the grounds. I stop and walk up and give them the rundown of what happened, give the counterfeit bill and the ripped bill to the officer, while the campus security dude is looking up the phone number in the student directory. Campus security finds out who it is, and off they go. Ten minutes later, Buddy is in the back of a police car with his dorm mate for theft under $1,000, because technically he didn't pay for the pizza. Possession of counterfeit currency, he had more in his dorm. 
Possession of narcotics. Possession of a controlled substance, Addis and Zanis I believe. Possession with intent to sell. Possession of stolen property. And there was another charge, but I can't remember. I guess he posted bail a couple of days later and came down to the pizza shop to have some words with me, but I wasn't working that night, so Buddy started trashing the lobby and got arrested again for trespassing, criminal mischief, vandalism, and they found a knife on him as well when they searched him, so there was a weapons charge too, but I think that got dropped. I'm not sure what happened after the second arrest, as I was never called to testify in court, but I'm going to assume he took a plea deal. He most definitely got expelled from the university though. Our sixth story is written by, Background Wave 2513, and is called, You're gonna out me as gay to everyone? Prepare to have your entire future go up in flames. This was almost seven years ago. I grew up in a small town from it country. Always knew I was gay, everyone else is homophobic, was planning on staying in the closet till I move out, etc. You know the song. Seven years ago, a certain senator from Vermont announced his candidacy for President of the United States, and me being the edgy high school senior who couldn't keep his mouth shut, I went all in on the online activism. Mostly on Reddit, r slash Sander for President, but most importantly on Twitter where I had a fan account with 10k followers that I wouldn't shut up about. This didn't go over well with everyone but people knew my politics and I was just a terminally online 17-year-old high schooler so no one took it seriously. I guess my parents got a few comments at church but that was about it. Even at school, I lacked self-awareness and wouldn't shut up about the Democratic primaries. I wasn't antisocial or anything but most of the people I hung out with were dorkier than me, and at least as unself-aware. Here is one thing I didn't account for, if you harass your entire rural hick town to follow your Twitter account, maybe don't use that account to like gay porn. These were likes from half a year prior, so you had to scroll a while to find them. But a guy from one of my classes, let's call him Alex, went through that trouble and sent screenshots to practically everyone at school plus my parents. This wasn't easy for me but the landing was softer than I expected, my parents took a week or so to adjust but were eventually fine with it, other adults in town avoided me but that wasn't much of a change, and people at school picked on me for a while but it dwindled down fast. I still was livid with what Alex did, and I wasn't letting it slide. Besides it wasn't entirely harmless either. My parents were willing to live with it but were still homophobic and outwardly so, and either way who wants to have their porn history shown to their parents? Alex was a top-of-the-class straight-A student with Ivy League aspirations, and definitely Ivy League qualifications, plus he could go the legacy route through his dad. His future was also fully dependent on his parents' money. I needed to hit these two aspects of Alex's life and turn them into smoke. Alex's parents were kind of the movie cliché of small-town rich folk, old money, Dad is a lawyer, good standing with the community and the church, conservative, involved in local and state politics, etc. Alex was a spoiled rich kid. Nothing intrinsically wrong with that but it comes with its fair share of rebellious dumb things you do as a spoiled rich kid. So here's how I used his past to destroy his future. Alex dealt drugs for a month when he was 15. Again he was a well put together valedictorian so totally out of place but he just wanted to do something on the edge I suppose. I knew this because we bought our weed from him through a friend one time. He still had the conversations and was more than happy to oblige by handing me the screenshots which I sent to his parents. They obviously accused me of fabricating them out of revenge so I asked my friend to show them the conversation firsthand next Sunday after the sermon, which he did. A year before outing me he impregnated a girl who ended up getting an abortion he paid for, with the quid pro quo she wouldn't say who the father is. It was already too late for her since her parents knew she was pregnant so she didn't mind taking the entire fall herself. I knew that girl pretty well, we weren't friends but we were close politically and would have the occasional discussion. She was livid with Alex for outing me and decided, after I not so subtly suggested it, to do a call out post on the town's Facebook group with screenshots of their conversations. Alex had an alt-right trolling account that he used to harass black people. I'm talking hard in words monkey jokes, IQ graphs and the like. Multiple people, mostly the one black kid who went to the school reported him but it was practically impossible to prove he was behind the account until I realized he sometimes logged into it on the school's computers and gave that as a tip to the principal. I'm not sure what the IT guy technically did, but he caught him red-handed and he ended up getting a week's suspension and having to apologize in front of the whole school. So Alex went from model son to junkie baby murdering Nazi overnight. 
his parents decided to kick him out without a penny after graduation. He still got into an Ivy League school but without his parents' support, he had to juggle school and a part-time job and dropped out a year in. He's now apparently a divorced absentee father who's involved with two multi-level marketing schemes at once. From a valedictorian who was destined to become a DC lawyer, to that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.